Do you know how your brain sends messages to the rest of your body? You've probably seen it shown something like this, like electricity. But is this true? Can we really produce electricity? Well, the short answer is yes, we can. And I'm going to show you how. What you see here is the brain cell or a neuron. It has a cell body, a long axon that transmits messages, and a lot of these short processes known as dendrites. Now let us see how one of these cells produce electricity. Well, this is possible for a neuron because the neuron is like a battery. That is, it has electrical potential. Electrical potential is the separation of charges with the potential to do work. Now let us see what this biological battery looks like. This is a segment of the axon. And as you can see, the separation of charges with more cations outside and anions inside. If we were to measure the potential difference, we would see that it is about minus 70 millivolts. The minus indicating it is the inside that is negative. Okay, so that looks like a battery, but how does this happen? This is because of the constituents of the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid. The extracellular fluid or the ECF is rich in sodium, chloride and calcium ions, whereas the intracellular fluid is rich in potassium and many proteins. The proteins carry a lot of negative charges. Note that there are sodium, chloride and calcium ions inside too and potassium and proteins outside, but they are in much lesser concentration. And it is the presence of these large anions inside the neuron that creates the negative membrane potential. Now, why do the ions remain separated like this? How come they do not mix together? This is because they are separated by a selectively permeable membrane. The neural membrane is very selective of what it lets pass through. The proteins here are synthesized by the cell for various needs and it cannot simply allow them to diffuse out. And the ions? Well, the ions cannot cross the membrane because of the lipid nature of the membrane. Lipids, as you know, are hydrophobic and they will repel these ions. Now, this does not mean that the ions cannot cross the membrane at all. No, they need special protein channels or transporters for them to do so. This creates a very interesting scenario. Now, based on which of these channels are open or closed, the neuron can make charges flow, or in other words, generate electricity. Let us assume a stimulus has reached the neuron. Now, to see how the membrane potential changes, let's plot a graph. Let's plot membrane potential against time. The membrane potential throughout the neuron at the resting state is minus 70 millivolts. This is known as the resting membrane potential. Now, when a stimulus reaches the neuron, it makes the membrane more positive. And if the voltage reaches about minus 55 millivolts, then an electrical impulse will fire. Here, the voltage will rise and the membrane charge will reverse, reaching about 20 to 30 millivolts. This is known as the depolarization stage. After a few milliseconds, the voltage will fall steeply, reaching about minus 90 millivolts. This is known as the repolarization stage. At minus 90 millivolt, the voltage is way below the normal resting state. This is known as the hyperpolarization stage. Then it will slowly return to normal again. Now this characteristic curve that forms due to the rapid increase and decrease of voltage is what is called as action potential. Now the interesting thing about action potential is that it will fire only after the membrane depolarizes to minus 55 millivolts. But what is so special about this voltage? Well, hold on to that thought. I'll come to that very soon. Let's look at the axon segment again. First, what's happening in the resting state? As we have already discussed, in the resting state, potassium is high inside and low outside, which means they would want to diffuse out. But they can do so only if there are ion channels. And yes, there are. These are called leak channels. That is, they are open all the time. So potassium can easily diffuse out, yet they don't do that. And that is because concentration gradient is not the only force acting here. The negative membrane potential will attract these positive ions inside. So at minus 70 millivolts, this ion is near equilibrium. That is, the electrical and the chemical gradient are acting almost equally in opposite directions and there is little net movement. So that's the state of potassium. But what about sodium? Well, sodium is in high concentration outside. This means these ions would want to diffuse in. And the negative membrane potential will also attract these positive ions. 
then how come they do not come rushing in? This is because there are very few sodium leak channels, not enough for them to enter inside easily. Now, even though these channels are few, if the diffusion goes on for a long time, it would eventually let all the sodium in and dissipate the gradients. So how does the neuron prevent this from happening? Enter sodium potassium ATPase. This transporter will throw out all the sodium ions that sneak in. But every time sodium enters, potassium would have gone out through the leak channels to compensate for the positive charge. So ATPase will bring back these trays. However, it does not merely exchange sodium for potassium. It throws out three sodium ions for two potassium ions that it brings in. This way, it contributes to the electrical gradient too. Which means this transporter is acting against the gradients. And that requires energy. The energy is obtained from ATP hydrolysis. Now, sodium and potassium are the only two ions that matter in the resting state. This is because no other ions have ion channels or transporters and therefore they cannot cross the membrane and do not alter the resting membrane potential. Now let us see how the membrane potential changes during an action potential. Imagine a stimulus has reached the neuron. Usually it is in the form of a chemical released from the preceding neuron called a neurotransmitter. And neurotransmitters reach the dendrites at specific sites called synapses. The synapses have a very special type of sodium channel. These are not open all the time. They open only on binding specific neurotransmitters. And when these channels open, sodium would rush in, driven by both the electrical and the concentration gradient. And sodium coming in will depolarize the membrane at the dendrites. Now it's the summation of the stimuli from all the dendrites that reaches the axon. And if the amount of sodium that has come in depolarizes the axonal membrane to minus 55 millivolt, then an action potential will fire. How? Well, the axonal membrane are lined by a very special type of channel called the voltage-gated sodium channel. They open at a specific voltage. Any guesses what that is? Yes, it is minus 55. And when these channels open, it completely changes the permeability for sodium. Sodium goes from being sparingly permeant to highly permeant and all the sodium will rush in, depolarizing the membrane and increasing the voltage, opening even more voltage-gated sodium channels, which means sodium coming in will cause even more sodium to come in. And this goes on until the membrane charge reverses, positive inside and negative outside. This is known as the depolarization stage. At about 20 to 30 millivolt, the sodium ion will reach equilibrium. And there will be little net movement because the electrical and the concentration gradient will be acting equally in opposite directions. However, these channels do not stay open for long. They have another gate called the inactivation gate, which closes these channels in a few milliseconds. By the time these channels close, another type of channel called the voltage-gated potassium channels will open. These are also regulated by voltage, but they open at a much higher voltage of 20 to 30 millivolts. And when these channels open, it increases the permeability of potassium and potassium will go rushing out. Note that both the electrical and the concentration gradient is driving potassium outside. Also note that the movement of ions do not change their concentration significantly in the ECF. This is because the ECF is too large for small changes in the axonal segment to affect it. But the inside is not so. Here potassium rushing out will decrease the voltage and repolarize the membrane. This is known as the repolarization stage. And repolarization will close the voltage-gated potassium channels. But by the time these channels close, the membrane potential would have dropped way below normal to minus 80 or 90 millivolts. It will then slowly return to normal again by the action of the sodium-potassium ATPase. And the ion concentrations will be restored and the voltage-gated sodium channel will go back to its closed active state, ready to fire an action potential should another stimulus arrive. So there, that's the story of how a neuron generates electricity.